Since I started processing my raw photographs more than two decades ago, I've worked my way through a long line of raw editors in a vain quest for the perfect app. Camera Bag was one of those apps that I remember installing many years ago, but it had so much overlap with my existing photo apps that I never invested much time in it. Anyway, the developers of the app reached out to me recently and said they were a small indie team trying to offer an alternative to Lightroom and would I like to look at their app? And in a world of massive corporations, shilling subscriptions more expensive than your mortgage payment, I've got a lot of time for small independent companies and so of course I say, yes, I'd love to look at your app. It might be a bit unusual here on YouTube, but I like to live with software for a bit, rather than pissing around with the sliders for 10 minutes and then reading you the feature list accompanied by synth pop and some jazzy lower thirds titles. So I've been putting the app through its paces for a few weeks now, processing me roars, testing its strengths and weaknesses. And now I'm ready to reveal my findings to a synth pop backing and some jazzy lower thirds. Roll the tide, but we'll see. Camera Bag has been around in various different forms since 2008. Though this pro version was first released in 2019, and has enjoyed regular updates since then. I've been testing the 2024.3 release, which has a bunch of new features, the most notable of which is an AI denoising tool. But before we get into those headline features, let's kick off the reviews by talking about the basics. Camera Bag Pro has quite a unique interface, and I have to say, I quite like it. Most of the functionality that you need to access is on this right-hand side of the screen here. At the moment, we're in the File Browser tab, where it's got presets and adjustments. In File Browser, you can browse to a folder and then hover over any of the files within it to get a preview of that image. You can also click the Quack Look button to see everything that's in it and scroll up and down the screen to find your shot. Double click to open an image. Moving on to presets, and there are heaps of them here. There's the usual kind of fun presets. There are film emulations, and there's also some useful toolkit presets they call for doing things like basic adjustments to your shots. The meat of the app, of course, is in the adjustments tab, where everything is broken down into broad sections covering things like basics of bar line and color. We've also got buttons for the big ticket items, such as the AI denoising and upscaling. Once you start applying adjustments to your images, they appear in the tray at the bottom of the screen. You can crank up and down the sliders as you see fit. Everything you add appears in the draw section. You can also nest any of these into a group and save them as a preset if you want. The advantage of this car in the face is actually really nice because you can quickly flick backwards and forwards through any adjustments you've made to the image and tweak accordingly. You can turn them on and off to see what impact they are having or you can go back to any point in your editing workflow and remove those adjustments from your edit. It's great to see a developer try something new in terms of the interface. There are some thoughtful design decisions in this app such as the preset quick look previews and the on photo camera controls. The design language of the app is very Windows like which jars a bit on a Mac but the intent here is clearly to simply present the information in as clear a fashion as possible without unnecessary or intrusive fluff. It's a design decision that has paid off and makes Camera Bag Pro one of those apps that doesn't require an extensive read-through of the manual. The design of Camera Bag Pro is such that it encourages a methodical approach to your post-processing. Any adjustments that you apply from the selection on the right will appear in the drawer at the bottom of the screen and you can move the order of these around if you want. So I've applied a couple of presets which you can see down here. I've not yet enabled them. Let's click on the gamma curve first. 
And I'll draw your attention to the fact that you get the on-screen tools overlaid on the photo. I really like this. So rather than looking off to the side of the screen all the time to see what's going on, you've got the tool on here and you can immediately see right in front of you what effect the tool is having on the photograph. It's a really nice feature. I also like the fact that I can call up a histogram by hitting any of the number keys. You've got straight luminance RGB. But I really like the prominence tool, which gives you that kind of readout across the dynamic range of the image showing where the most color is in the range. So we've got camera, uh, gamma curve here. Let's drag down from the center just to darken up the bottom portion of this photograph and really make that undergrowth pop a little bit more. I would like you to see that there's a little bit of lag on these sliders. It's nothing too disgraceful, but it is there. I've got a fairly quick M2 MacBook Pro here. So applied that effect. I've also got a luminance mask here, which I will show you. Again, we've got the same on-screen tool, which is really nice. So I've got this only masking the darker portions of the screen of the photograph, sorry, and I'm fading off so that the lightest portions of the image are not affected. The red area here is what the mask will affect. And I can, you know, increase or decrease how much is applied by moving the curve as I want. And to the right of the luminance mask, showing what will be affected by that mask, we have a contrast tool. And so just those portions that I masked out that were in red, we're going to apply some nice contrast those to make that bottom portion of the screen really pop. I found the lag on the sliders a little bit annoying, but it wasn't enough of an issue to impede my post-processing workflow. And it bears repeating that this is an app that costs a one of 34 US dollars. So I think I'll cut the devs some slack, particularly since I've experienced similar lag in apps costing 10 times as much. One of the big surprises to me as someone who's experiencing the app after a long time away it's just how comprehensive the tool set is. It's evident that the developers are photography enthusiasts because there are features in here, such as value and light-based curves adjustments, that I haven't seen in top-tier editors. If you are the sort of person that likes to get really down into the granular aspects of post-processing, then features such as those enhanced curves tools will definitely have some appeal. The list of features that photographers expect to see in photo editors changes over time. And the big change in the last couple of years is of course, AI. Camera Bag Pro comes equipped with two big AI tools, Denoise and Upscale. And I put them both through their paces, starting with the Denoise. So we can see how the AI Denoise is performing in Camera Bag Pro. I use one of my regular test shots. This image was shot on a Canon 7D2 at ISO 6400. And if we zoom in, you can see there is a heap of noise, color noise. It's not the sharpest image in the world either. Let's get the other options on screen. So I did Camera Bag Pro. I did Photometer because I thought it was a similar kind of app, be a useful comparison. And we've got DxO on the right hand side here, all AI denoising. So let's start off with the Camera Bag Pro. Let's zoom in on its one over here. And there is the denoise shot. This is the original. And here's how it did cleaned it up very nicely indeed. You could argue there's a little bit of loss of detail but it's quite impressive. There's a kind of marble patination in the background there, but it's not a bad result at all. So just so, so you can see how the others did, let's flick over to the right here a bit. Here's Photometer. That's what it looked like. That's how Photometer did, and you can see the two side by side here. Here's Camera Bag Pro, and here's Photometer. I think Photometer has done a better job and if we go over to DxO we can see it's done much better job but it's a considerably more expensive application it's just useful in terms of a benchmark so just for comparison here's the original 
shot and this is what DxO did with it. It's kind of completely removed. There's no marble patination going on in the background here. Excellent. Detail retention. So let's go back over to the object of this review. Over the camera bag pro. So that's before and after. So the denoise results were good, but not brilliant. Would it be worth spending 10 times as much on DxO Photo Lab for the kind of improvement I demonstrated? Most people, I suspect the answer would be a resounding no. But for the hobbyist that camera bag is pitched at, it will get the job done. How about the other AI tool? I tried this on a variety of small test images. And here's one of those examples, a 2000 by 1300 pixel wildlife photo. Here's the results of the AI upscaling. I took this image, which you can see here, this is the original, and I've opened it and the control and the result, the image from camera back here in Photoshop. Viewing the original at 400% to replicate that four times rescale. So I'm just did resized it in Photoshop without using any AI tools. It would look something similar to this. So here is the original image and here is what Camera Bag Pro produced. And I have to say, it's actually really underwhelming. I mean, that's just in Photoshop, just zoomed in the 400% and here is Camera Bag Pro. Not a huge difference. I guess it was being charitable. I could say it's done an okay job on the grass. If you look at the grass down on the right here, it's quite pixelated and the original size and quite a bit clearer, but it's done a pretty poor job on the kangaroo. Here's the original and here's the upscale. We've got quite a bit of loss of detail. And to show you what I mean by that, I did a control sample in Giga Pixel. Yes, I know it's really unfair. Giga Pixel costs a couple of hundred dollars on its own just for an AI tool but it gives you a good indication of what is possible with upscaling. So hold on your hands. Here's what the Geiger pixel version looks like. Yeah, uh, like <laughs> night and day, isn't it? I mean, look at the clarity of the details on the kangaroo. So here's camera bag and here's Geiger pixel. I guess in the case of AI upscaling, you really get what you pay for. All things considered, the results from that AI upscale were so average that I'm not sure it warrants inclusion in Camera Bag Pro at all. Definitely not if you consider how good, comparatively, the denoise tool was. That then is a broad overview of Camera Bag Pro, its interface workflow and headline features. Let's talk about its strengths and weaknesses now. Apart from the lackluster AI upscale tool, the biggest issue with Camera Bag Pro, and it's a problem that affects many photo apps in this niche of the market, is raw compatibility. I tested the Mac version and Camera Bag Pro could only read those raw files directly supported by Apple, which meant I couldn't test it on my Fujifilm X-T4 X-Trans raw files. So if the pricing and feature set of this app appeals to you, you should check out the list of supported cameras before purchasing. It's not the fastest photo editor I've ever used and I did experience varying degrees of lag on the sliders when processing photos. It was a minor irritation though and not a deal breaker. I did also briefly test the Windows version of the app on my games PC fairly old Core i7 3.4 GHz Windows 10 machine, the GeForce RTX 3060 Ti graphics card in it. On that PC, demanding operations such as upscale and denoise took on average three times longer to complete, but the interface was far snappier and there was no lag at all when using the photo adjustments. The app has comprehensive masking tools, but the traditional style mask, not AI, which means no one-click Skype or subject masking. One of the core features is its comprehensive list of presets. And I love the quick look functionality for this, so you can see the impact of all those presets on a single photo. Camera Bag Pro is a tiny little app competing in what is actually a surprisingly competitive niche, that sub $100 photo editor. Its direct competition is ACDC Photo Studio, Affinity Photo, Nitro, Pixelmator Pro and Corel Aftershot. Though of those, two apps, Nitro and Pixelmator, are Mac only. 
As much as I liked Camera Bag Pro, if I was forced to choose between it and a Fiddy Photo or Pixelmator Pro, then it would lose out because both of those apps are more refined and faster, and particularly in the case of Affinity, more fully featured. Now that the billion dollar tech company Canva own Affinity Photo, there's an argument for spending your money with a small independent dev team, but let's face it, any purchasing decision is going to be based on outcomes rather than principles. I appreciate the effort that the team at Neversender are putting into rethinking the photo editor interface and commend them on the affordable pricing and one-time purchase model. If you're looking for an alternative to something like Dark Table and can't afford to spend several hundred bucks a year on a photo editor, that it comes recommended. And that, my friends, will do us for this look at Camera Bag Pro. What's your go-to budget photo editor? Do let me know in the comments section below. And if you got value from this content, please do hit the old like button and consider subscribing for more photo, video, and drone-related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta!